Did you know that you're supposed to live 120 years? Yet most people in the U.S. die in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Welcome to Longevity with Dr. Wilcox. For the next 60 minutes, we're going to add years to your life. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Dr. Simon Wilcox. Good morning. We're back. Good morning. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, JR. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Tim, how you doing? Right. Tim's in the house. Tim's in the house. Uh, yeah, we missed you yesterday. We, we made our house calls. We, there's about eight. Those of you who are listening, um, you may or may not know. There's about eight patients we've committed to we make house calls on. And um, yesterday was our house call day. And JR, you didn't go, and I had to take Jennifer with me instead. And Jennifer actually looks better than you, JR. Yes, I, I, I tend to agree with that, Doc. <laughs> she does, definitely looks better than Nurse JR. Yes, that's, that's, <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. So, Doc, how, how, did, how did it go yesterday? Yeah, it, it went pretty good. Um, in fact, and I, I don't know if I should say this on air, but, but, I, but I will. Um, Sherry, who, our, our yeah. friend who called, calls in all the time, we went to see her again um, to see how she was doing. And, and I, at the risk of... Uh, losing my license, I'm going to call her out on something. Um, you know, Sherry's a young lady who uh, was doing fine until about a year ago, and she had went to the hospital and came out with about four to six diagnoses. She spent 200 days last year in the hospital, and we made a commitment to, to stick by her side um, to try to ensure that um, we would reduce the number of days in the hospital um, this year. Uh, on the radio show maybe a week, week ago when she called in. She said we were nine for nine. It was the 9th of January, and uh, we had nine yeah. days in, and she had not been to the hospital yet. Um, we went out yesterday to the house, and she was struggling. Wow. Um, struggling a lot, and uh, she looked at me and said, Peaches, she, that's my nickname. <laughs> I didn't know that, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you said that on the radio. I know. That, that's Everybody her, knows that. That's her Peaches. nickname for me. No one else calls me that, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Not up until now. <laughs> so we'll go write it on my car, I'm sure. Yeah. So Peaches, it's, 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 get some personalized plates for you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Dr. Peaches. Dr. Peaches. <laughs> I said, Sherry, Sherry um, you're at a stage where we need to take you to the hospital and um and i'm going to say this to, to those friends of hers so i guess uh three shows ago when i said i um i changed her appointment if you're out there listening sure you know that your appointment was going to be the next day she told me that she had a flood of phone calls from her friends saying the doctor said your fo- your, po- your appointment's been changed <laughs> those same friends who called her about the appointment i need to call her right now and tell her that she needs to go to the hospital I actually sent an ambulance to her house. She, um, I went to assistance of her, her niece who was there. Um, she refused the ambulance. And um, I, I only say you have to go to the hospital when you really got to go. And I, I love her dearly. Um, I hugged her and kissed her and says, would you please go for peaches? <laughs> <laughs> she looked at me and said, I'm still not going. Wow. And then her, um, her granddaughter... She should do it for Queen B. Queen B, if you would do it for Queen B. So we're calling you out on this, Sherry. We need you to go to the hospital. And if we have to come and form a human chain from your house to the hospital and put you on a stretcher and push you there, we need to get you to the hospital. Go, um, oh, Sherry, go. Now, <laughs> now that I violated all rules of patient confidentiality. Well, we didn't mention her last name, Doc. <laughs> okay. Or Peaches. <laughs> oh, Peaches. <laughs> Um, we had a caller, um, Tony, and they had a question. Yeah, this was um, this was actually a really interesting question. Um, we got a call from a couple that is from Armenia. They're visiting Las Vegas right now. Um, they have a relative that was diagnosed with cancer in Armenia. Okay. Um, now, where they're at, it's very rural. They don't have access to modern medicine. But they asked, what what can they bring back with them to possibly help their relative? Well, um, it's difficult to practice medicine over the radio. But, but let me say that um, 
not seeing that patient, not knowing a lot about that patient, um, but knowing a lot about um, alternative medicine and medicine in general, um, A, they would eat something um, that if, something that's fermented. Um, we talked about kefir milk and um, you're trying to alter the diet. So all the things we talked about in diet before, the, the kefir milk, the vitamin D3, um, the need to avoid the sugars. And I would guess that she's probably not doing a lot of junk food. She's back in the backwoods of Romania anyway. Um, but there's a product out there called Helian, H-A-E-L-A-N, Helian 951. And listen to this, this is from my mouth to your ears, Helian 951. Probably the most powerful anti-cancer item available. Uh, a researcher by the name of um, Walter Wainwright, and that's W-A-I-N-W-R-I-N-G-H, and I was trying to look some things up about him this morning. And was sad to find that he actually passed away on my birthday, November 26, 2013. And I've talked to him oh, maybe three or four different times. I can't say I was close enough to say he was my friend, but I, I clearly admired him. Um, I've met him at the various trade shows. Um, he has a, this product, Hellion 951. He's been applauded um, throughout the world. Um, the NIH has given him a number of awards for his product. Um, he had a group of uh, seven individuals out in um, Santa Barbara, California, at the hospital there, oh, maybe seven years ago. Um, who were all um, dying, um, was scheduled to die within um, 30 to 60 days. They all had failed all treatments. They had various different cancers. They were all put on Helian 951. And, and it turns out that, that five of, the, five of the, those individuals kind of continue, continue to live another six, seven years. And today, my understanding is that just as of last um, October, three of them are still alive um, on Helian 950. One, um, it's, it's a fermented um, soy slash mushroom product from the, from the foothills of China. Um, it is it is phenomenal in terms of its ability um, to give you nutrition, um, to improve your muscle mass, and to fight off cancer. Um, it, it's just one of the one of the best products I've ever seen, um, and that's that, and that's the product I probably would want them to. To take back with them to um to Armenia. Um, is this something that requires a prescription? Actually, it's over the counter or over the internet. Um, you can buy it over the internet. It's a little pricey. It's about a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars a case. I think the last time I I actually had to buy it for a patient it was about a year and a half ago. It cost about twelve hundred dollars a case. Um, it doesn't have the best taste. In fact, it tastes like mud. <laughs> and um, Walter had. Uh, modified it so that it actually the new product would have stevia in it um, to, to actually balance out the taste. We would instruct patients to take grapefruit juice to try to numb the taste buds and then take a straw and just suck it to the back of the throat and swallow it down. Um, but it's one of the most powerful antioxidants. It has more phytonutrients um, than, than things that we normally would buy over the counter. Um, it doesn't, Americans like things that taste good. And unfortunately, it doesn't taste good, but it is it is powerful, um, packed full of nutrients. And even the, um, the university in, um, in Philadelphia uses it for the um, muscular dystrophy, dystrophy children with muscular dystrophy because it helps build muscle mass. Um, the, the other question about the university, I think, did you... I was just going to say, well, you, you kind of answered it. Um, you said that the university in Philadelphia... Are there any other universities that are using Helian 951? Um, actually, um, Harvard University, um, for those females who have failed the treatment for um, cancer, particularly uterine cancer, um, cervical cancer, when they failed the chemotherapy, when they failed the traditional treatment, their next step is to Helian 951. Um, as a as a, as a part of the armamentarium to address cancer, um, it is powerful at, at making cancer dormant, at killing off cancer cells while actually enhancing your normal cells that are non-cancerous. Um, and I, I to Walter Range Wright's family, um, um, my condolences. I, I was unaware that he had passed away in this past November, but he, he was a brilliant scientist, and he's received um, tremendous awards, a number of awards, from the NIH for his work with Helian 
and his ability to um, construct um, actually paradigms that would allow us to address cancer and without using traditional um, anti-cancer agents that we've, we've grown used to. I would instruct individuals to call the um, Walter Ringwright Foundation and, and, and ask for um, DVDs. Um, he has a number of lectures out there, um, a lot of them from, um, that he's done out in Europe and Sweden as well as the United States. And during those lectures, he goes into exquisite detail in terms of why Hellion works. Um, exquisite detail where you get to learn about the biochemistry of the body, where you get to understand the, the culture of cancer inside your body and how you can take control over that culture of cancer when it harbors inside your body. Um, so it, it's, it's always number one for me. Um, I, I have no financial investment in the product, although it's something that I think once we open up a store um, in, in our um, office and an e-commerce site, it's certainly one of the things we're going to put on that site because it's one of the best products out there for a, if you need to build muscle, people come to me all the time and say, Doc, I'm skinny. How do I gain weight? Helium 951 will do it. Doc, I can't build muscle. Helium 951 will do it. COPDers who have difficulty breathing, Helium 951 improves the muscle mass and, and, their, and their pulmonary function test, so COPDers. Runners who are running in the Olympics, who have tested before and after going on Helium 951, um, their performance improves on Helium 951. And those individuals who happen to have cancer um, is the best anti-cancer agent out there, Helium. 951. Got a question for you. Would it be a good thing to take for somebody that had maybe cancer in their family? You know, would it would be good for them to take it preventatively? You know, um, the short answer is yes. Um, and there's nothing wrong with me, I don't think. And I take 13 items a day. I keep saying I should just go buy a Helion. Now, I've done it before. I bought the Helion. I put it in the refrigerator. And I would drink about two to four ounces a day. It is tough. <laughs> if I knew I had cancer, I would take it. But it is tough when you feel healthy um, to take Helium 951 because it doesn't, it doesn't taste the greatest, but it's the best item out there. So preventatively, um, yes, it's a great for your armamentarium. It, it reduces the need to take 10, 12, 13 items. You just take Helium um, along with um, your, your kefir. And, and you move on. Um, these fermented products are really phenomenal in terms of how they impact on the quality of your health day to day. So the short answer awesome. is yes. Awesome. Okay. You definitely can use that. No, no question at all. We we had some um, some clarity we needed to bring to the table. Yeah, we had a caller call, call in uh, after the show the other day, um, on Monday, and their question was they really didn't understand how the stress can affect our adrenals. They were they wanted some clarity on that. We had a show um, earlier in the week to talk about um, not allowing your history to impact on your future activities, not allowing your history to impact on your future activities. And it was all about the adrenals and adrenal gland. And, and I think for some people it was a new concept, and I probably went over some of the, the particulars a little too fast. So, so let me review that and clarify why um, stress will impact and how it impacts on, on those adrenals. You're listening to KLAV, station 1230, KLAV, station 1230, AM, KLAV, station 1230 AM. And we'll be right back. Hello. My name is Dr. Simon Wilcox. I'm a board-certified physician in family medicine. I have 20 years' experience with drug and alcohol abuse and treatment thereof. I bring to you a new service at my facility. We're asking you to examine your household, your family, your community, and decide if there's someone there who needs what we have to offer. Give Dr. Simon Wilcox a call today at 702-749-7111.
Are you having difficulty detoxing from drugs or medication? Let Dr. Wilcox help you. Call at 702-749-7111. His revolutionary detoxing program is designed to help you detox without the discomfort of other procedures. Call him at 702-749-7111. Visit his office in Summerlin at 8751 Charleston, Suite 210, behind Fleming Steakhouse. Call Dr. Wilcox at 702-749-7111. Do you know that 60% of the healthcare dollars spent over the next 10 years will be spent on stem cells or a stem cell related process? Listen in as we define for you how medicine will change your life and the life of those who you love over the next 10 to 15 years. Covering the issues that matter and adding years to your life. Longevity with Dr. Wilcox. Monday and Thursday morning at 10. Only here on KLAV. Just about four years ago, I was longboarding. Hit the side of a truck. I'm sent home with the Roxy Codone and the Percocet. The dose milligram, it didn't change, but how often I would take them, did. I, I wanted to stop. These withdrawal symptoms are something that I wish upon no one. I went to my doctor, Dr. Wilcox. He claimed withdrawal free. It was literally a miracle. I feel, I would say, 100% better. I'm Dr. Simon Wilcox. I've been practicing medicine for the last 23 years. My passion has been drug and alcohol dependency, particularly methamphetamine. So what I've done in my practice is I've, I've re-engineered how we approach the detox rejuvenation process. You go through a process where you don't feel any symptoms. My staff priority is to ensure you're not having that discomfort. Call 702-749-7111. Longevity with Dr. Wilcox continues. Here again, your host, Dr. Simon Wilcox. Oh, Doc, we were having some fun in the studio here. Yeah, you won't leave. Tim was mind. saying, how do you let that peaches go? <laughs> I know, you're going you're gonna to change the, the password on, on the computers. computers. Your office, the peaches are here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right, you're not going to let me live this down. I, I, I just can't shared. believe you let it out. Uh, I, I didn't mean to, but um, but Sherry, that's, that's, that's the way, that's the names he hashtagged me. So, uh, I'm See that, peaches, Sherry? You know, it's all your fault. Um, let me answer that, that, that question yeah, about, the the, uh, about the adrenals. Um, not allowing your history to impact on your future. And as I said on, on, on the other show, um, individuals who've had different types of stresses in their life, whether it's been divorce, whether it's, it's trauma, whether it's physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, whether it's been a, a motor vehicle accident, if they've seen something that's been traumatic, if they've been through um, um, surgery, um, all of those are stresses that can impact on your adrenals. Um, if there's someone who you have an issue with, if there's children who you love but you don't like anymore because of what they're doing, the stress that impacts on your adrenals. If someone's able to walk into the room and change your atmosphere, make, give you a bad day, um, make you lose your appetite, or make you lose your mind, <laughs> that, that person is causing stress in your life. Um, and that person is toxic to your life, and at the end of the day, is toxic to your adrenals. When you when you finally get burnt out adrenals, um, the adrenals um, are burnt out causes anxiety, causes weight gain. That's, that's in the category of people who are fat but don't don't overeat. Right. Um, even though they're overweight, they're not overeating. Uh, it causes um, diarrhea, causes insomnia, difficulty sleeping. Um, causes this ill-defined abdominal pain, causes headaches, causes dizziness, um, and the list goes on. And so we as physicians end up giving you prescriptions for each one of those individual items. And as I believe it was Ralph, the caller in the last show, called and talked about the my, book Mind Body, um, that there are things that happen to our mind that impact on our body. And, some, and it's a difficult concept, but, but I remind people, if you think about music, Music um, can be soothing. And the reason music can be soothing and make you feel good, can make you feel relaxed, is because what it does to the chemistry of your brain, it alters our chemistry. And it's a chemical reaction. We are walking batteries. We have trillions of mi microscopic chemical reactions occurring. 
music changes that chemistry in a way that makes us relax. It's not just we hear the music and we feel good. We hear the music, but the actual tone of the music, the tone of the singer's voice, and, and the, 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 the tone of the music that supports the singer's voice, ultimately impacts on how our body responds um, to the situation. And, and in the same way, um, with, with music where we're being relaxed, and music where we are feeling very comfortable with, with music, um, when stress impacts on us, it impacts on us in a negative way, the same, the same thing. It impacts on the chemistry in our brain. And that chemistry has ultimately, because of the hypopituitary axis and the fact that the adrenals is involved in the hypopituitary axis, um, it sends signals to the adrenals when the adrenals become burnt out. It's difficult for the doctor to identify because our lab tests will just show that your cortisol is low, um, but it doesn't necessarily explain um, what's going on. It doesn't really send the biggest red flag up. The doctor has to be thinking about the thought that this may be a stress syndrome. These issues you're coming to the table with, complaining of inability to sleep, this abdominal pain, this um, anxiety, um, insomnia, etc. All at the end of the day, a result of the um, adrenal fatigue syndrome. So I, I hope that that makes more sense to, to the caller who said that um, they really didn't understand the connection. Um, I can draw a big chart that explains the exact chemicals that are released and how those chemicals then impact on adrenals, then how the adrenals releases another subset of chemicals, but this is a radio show. So me drawing that won't, will not help you understand it. We will start having town hall meetings soon, and yep. you're welcome to come to those town hall meetings, and I can t fillet some of these issues a little better when I have a chalkboard in front of me, and we can walk you through the biological um, process. Yeah, Doc, we've got to definitely get something going here with the town hall. You know, get uh, it'd be nice for our listeners to be able to put a, a face to the voice, Peaches. And um, <laughs> 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 so we got to really try to shoot for something here soon, I think. Um, uh, if they want to call in and uh, call in and yak at us and see if they're receptive and so we know how to plan, it's uh, 702-731-1230. Uh, we like to see you hear your response and see if you guys would be interested in coming out and uh, meeting the doc and uh, just having a group setting and you can go over some different issues and things and ask a lot of questions. And, of course, there'll be no charge for that. We'd just love to meet you and say hello. Absolutely. Um, one of the other callers that call in um, call to us, and often individuals driving their cars and they would wait till they reach their destination, which is the correct thing to do, not, not to jump on your cell phone and call me. But as a result of that, they end up calling us once we have reached our office. Um, one of the questions um, happened to be um, that, that an individual who had been doing well for a long time and, and, and had a new job at an executive level um, and now thought they were having experiences that they thought qualified as, as adrenal stress syndrome. And, and my response to that person, I told him I respond to that on air, is that yes, um, every, every new level in life brings new devils. We like to call it every new level in life brings new devils and when 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 they when we talk about that we're talking about <laughs> issues with you got a new job you got you got a new crazy boss you got new crazy colleagues um who are <laughs> impacted in you and changing changing your, your atmosphere um and so every new level in life brings new devils therefore there's potentially that new level now um starts to impact on your future um on your medical future on on the quality of your adrenals and i see jr is grinning over there <laughs> as we as we're trying to share share that information, so yes, it, you know, your adrenal um, syndrome, your adrenal insufficiency, yes, may have come from your past past ten years, twenty years ago for skeletons that are unresolved, or it may have come from your most recent future, something that you were elated about when it first occurred, but now you've arrived to that new job, and suddenly you find yourself putting on weight. Suddenly you find yourself not sleeping at night. Suddenly you find yourself having rounds of diarrhea and anxiety. And you wonder why every time you think about going to work, all these symptoms come on board. Every every new level brings new devils. Um, so I hope that answers that, that question um, from for the caller. Um, I, I, I try to um, clarify as best we can. Um, and sometimes I'm confusing um, in my explanation. If I am, please call me out on it. Call me up, and we will um, try to 
to clarify um, the question and clarify my answers if we need to. Well, you know, Doc, <clears throat> we've been talking about um, different treatments that we're doing with, um, you know, some stem cells, and you know, we don't like talking about that much boogeyman stuff. People think it is, but it's it's not. Um, and we we're we're working on doing treatments now with hair and balding uh, for both women and and men. I mean, you know, it's, I I never really realized it was a big problem for men. I I know about it because I got a little thin hair. You know, I got three kids and <laughs> a wife, and and uh, my stress levels are definitely always up. And in the course, there's there's me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. J.R. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, the it, some interesting treatments, and it makes sense uh, what we're doing. And I'm excited about it because I'm yeah. going to be one of the poster childs. Yeah, we're gonna make you our, our, our first one in, in this office to do. Yeah, um, we've um, as as you know, I, I'm I'm a stem cell fellow, um, but there's something out there. What called does fellow mean, Doc? I mean, I mean fellow, I, fellow, fellow, fellow. You're a nice fellow, fellow you know, fellow. don't you know? But we're in Europe. Uh -huh. um, a fellow is a person who's in training, in, okay, in process, okay. Um, and then when you finish, you finish your fellowship. And I've actually finished one fellowship, and I'm doing another fellowship. So I'm still, okay. I still consider myself um, in training, um, trying to really understand what I feel will be the future of medicine um, with stem cells. But there's sort of a level just before the stem cells was called PRP, platelet-rich plasma, platelet-rich plasma. And that's just you draw your blood. Okay. And just like you get a regular blood draw, they take that blood, they spin it down, and when you spin it down, it it separates, and the top of it, top layer is serum with platelets in it. And the bottom layer has all the red cells and your white cells, all the components, the cell components of the blood. Amazingly, that that serum level has healing powers, and you take that serum level, which are almost like miniature stem cells, that and has lots of platelets in it, platelet rich plasma PRP. And you can take that and inject it into the scalp. Okay. And so many people have have androgens, have have hair follicles that are dormant, um, that have gone to sleep. We know they've gone to sleep because they're going bald. They're not, they're not growing. <laughs> they're right? not growing. Yeah. They used to be alive, but they're now not <laughs> they are dormant or becoming dormant. And, and, and so um, because people are vain, uh, I just cut all my hair off instead of letting my bald spot show about, about 10 years ago. But... But because um, people are vain, they want their hair back. Particularly, females want their hair back, yeah. um, and there are ways to do that. Um, I trained in hair transplants twelve years ago, and I know how to take the little strip out the back of your hair, and you put in the little micro pores, and you and you put the hairs into the scalp from the hair transplant. But a newer, less invasive way is to use PRP, and you okay. pull the um, person's blood, you spin it down, you take the serum. And you take a little fine needle and inject it into the scalp. Um, you give a patient some medicine to sedate them so they don't feel they're not really they're conscious, but they're not aware of what's going on. Um, and you just do the injections. It takes all of maybe fifteen minutes, huh. and within six to ten weeks, you see the the the, the new growth of the hair products. Now that has been available for the last three years. What the way we've modified is that we've added laser to that in our, in our office. So laser therapy by itself has the ability to wake up those dormant follicles that are no longer functioning. And now what we do is we, we give you laser therapy in combination with the PRP for even better result um, in terms of returning your hair to its normal size and consistency and thickness and color. Um, so people have been very, um, very, very happy with that. Um, they get several laser treat treatments a week or so before, then they receive the treatment, and then several laser treatments a week or so after. Um, and, and that's really phenomenal. Um, when people are trying to control their aesthetics, we look in the mirror and we, we, we want to like who we see. If we don't like who we see, then we need to do something about that. Um, I, w I always tell people you know, uh, that um, I love my relatives, but I don't want to look like them. <laughs> <laughs> I love my relatives, but I just don't want to look like them. So they, they already tell me what I'm going to look like if I don't take care of myself. There so, you go. So I hug them and I kiss them and say, I love you, but I just don't want to look like you. So I'm actively trying not to look like my beloved relative. And for those people who are just like me and, and, uh, and want to keep their hair, um, this, this hair process is, is really powerful. Let's go to break. Um, KLAV. 12.30 a.m. KLAV, 12.30 a.m. Please call in 731-1230. 
We'll be right back. To the country, I'm gonna eat a lot of peaches. Moving to the country, I'm gonna eat a lot of peaches. Move out two years ago, I was longboarding, hit the side of a truck. I'm sent home with the Roxy Codone and the Percocet. The dose milligram, it didn't change, but how often I would take them did. I, I wanted to stop. These withdrawal symptoms are something that I wish upon no one. I went to my doctor, Dr. Wilcox. He claimed withdrawal free. It was literally a miracle. I feel, I would say 100% better. I'm Dr. Simon Wilcox. I've been practicing medicine for the last 23 years. My passion has been drug and alcohol dependency, particularly methamphetamine. So what I've done in my practice is I've, I've re-engineered how we approach the detox rejuvenation process. You go through a process where you don't feel any symptoms. My staff priority is to ensure you're not having that discomfort. Call 702-749-7111. Do you know that 60% of the healthcare dollars spent over the next 10 years will be spent on stem cells or a stem cell related process? Listen in as we define for you how medicine will change your life and the life of those who you love over the next 10 to 15 years. Covering the issues that matter and adding years to your life. Longevity with Dr. Wilcox. Monday and Thursday morning at 10. Only here on KLAV. Are you having difficulty detoxing from drugs or medication? Let Dr. Wilcox help you. Call at 702-749-7111. His revolutionary detoxing program is designed to help you detox without the discomfort of other procedures. Call him at 702-749-7111. Visit his office in Summerlin at 8751 Charleston, Suite 210, behind Fleming Steakhouse. Call Dr. Wilcox at 702-749-7111. Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Wilcox. I'm a board certified physician in family medicine. I have 20 years experience with drug and alcohol abuse and treatment thereof. I bring to you a new service at my facility. We're asking you to examine your household, your family, your community, and decide if there's someone there who needs what we have to offer. Give Dr. Simon Wilcox a call today at 702-749-7111. You're listening to Longevity with Dr. Wilcox. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. Now, here again, your host, Dr. Wilcox. We're back again. I just want to finish up that topic. Um, before I do, let me just say hello. Um, if you're listening out there to Dr. Starks, I'm her and a number of other colleagues that approach us about being involved in some research, and we are actively working out those arrangements to have the um, the federal government um, support um, a number of the initiatives that we have started here. The patients right now will have to pay for, but ultimately once the research grants are in place, um, we can offer a number of our modalities um, under the label of research for um, at no cost to the participants. So we're, we're excited about that, and hopefully we will get that underway real soon. Um, before um, 2014 has yes. just closed out. We need to expedite that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jay, for <laughs> <laughs> your assistance in that. Yeah. Um, let me just follow up on our, our comments about PRP, um, platelet-rich plasma PRP, which is the sort of a, the miniature version of, of stem cells. Um, not only do we use it for the scalp regeneration, but in terms of aesthetics, um, we use it for as a as if as a facelift, so that individuals huh. can have those same type of cells. Um, who are concerned about the saggy skins? Who um, females who have to wear a lot of makeup? Um, those same cells actually can be injected underneath the skin of the wow. face, um, and six weeks later, you see you have a lot less wrinkles. Um, six weeks later, the skin is more rejuvenative. Um, the um, most females who had it, and it, this is big in. in um, in Asia and in Japan. Um, it hasn't really caught on in the United States, but it's something that you, you end up using significantly less makeup um, once it's done. Um, my, my, my ex-wife <laughs> had it done. Um, up how, did, in, how, did that, how did that turn out? Um, it, it turned out well. I mean, she actually had stem cells um, taken from her, her, um, her, mel her marrow, her pelvic bone. 
um, and my partner um, up in Park City. I actually injected her because um, I don't like working on my own family members, but um, in injecting her um, her face with the stem cells. Um, it 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 wasn't sexy the first week. Um, no, took a bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to try to keep her in, uh -huh. in the house for a little bit. Um, but once the, all the the the, the red bruising um, disappeared, um, she very clearly looked years younger and and reported using significantly less makeup um, after the procedure was done. So um, and again, six weeks after the procedure, you see the difference whether it's the um, the faces for the PRP and stem cells, or whether it's the um, hair um, transformation with PRP and stem cells. So both ways. I mean, so it's it's new, exciting technology. It's easy. It's your it's your body. It's your serum. Um, there's no rejection. There's no need for anything for suppression, and you don't have to worry about side effects because we're just using your own chemicals from your own body. We withdraw from your body, and within ten minutes of the time we take it out of your body, we reintroduce it into your body. Uh, Doc, is there other, uh, you said the pelvic bone, I know the tibula is another uh, area of concentration to remove those regenerative cells. Um, is there other places, or am I going to run out? I mean, if I wanted to keep going, I mean, is there is there a possibility there, and would it be harmful for me? Um, short answer is not harmful. Um, you will not run out. Um, you can get it from the tibia, yes. You can get it from the pelvic bone, yes. You can take it from the sternum right huh. here in your, your breast bones and the chest. Um Yes, you could take it from there. You don't run out because the body just continues to replenish whatever you've extracted. Wow. Um, the body will, it's a phenomenal machine. It will continue to make more cells. So you can't drain yourself of the cells and not have any more cells left per okay. se. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a real option and, and it works. Um, and it's, a, it's a simple and most people can feel concerned about having foreign products, having foreign foreign bodies in the, uh, uh, injected into into their 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 system. Here is your it's your blood, stuff. It's your stuff. It's, it's your stuff you're already walking around with in your bone marrow. We just put, we're just doing a cell transfer. We're putting the cells in a different portion of the body. And the nice thing of that, because of that, there's no. There's no real side effect. We're not manipulating the cells. We're just taking right. the cells out and 10 minutes later reintroducing them to another segment of your body. And another question. If they're already in your body, why wouldn't they go to where they're needed? <laughs> JR, good question. JR. Yeah. JR gets the award for the day. <laughs> the, big, the big elephant in the room, yes. Um, they do go to where they're needed, but they don't go in the concentrations that's needed to rejuvenate you. They go in concentrations to re replenish on where they're at, what where your face cells they go in concentration to replenish some of your your hair cells on the scalp, but not in big enough concentration to really renew like dormant hairs or to renew aged skin to actually renew aged skin and to re to generate and wake up dormant hair follicles. You need a larger concentration. So the the body has a way that is already sending has pathways where they're picking up those cells from the bone marrow and bring them to different parts. That's, that's why we're still living because we got new cells in, in, our, in our kidneys and new cells in our heart, uh, new cells in our skin and, and, and eye cells, et cetera, our retina, but they're not in big concentrations. What we're doing is taking an army of those cells instead of two or three, we're taking thousands of them at one time and, and then we're directing where they're going. We're directing the traffic. Gotcha. And by directing the traffic, and we, we've created a platform, the platform happens to be the face, the platform happens to be the scalp, and that platform, when it receives that army, a concentrated amount of cells, then it starts to regenerate um, what, what was formerly there. Because uh, remember, these cells are what we call plural potential cells. These cells are cells that have not differentiated. You've had them from birth. They have multiplied. They've divided. They've replicated. They've never differentiated. Because they've never differentiated, they've never become anything. They remain um, multi-plural potential cells. They, re they retain the potential to become whatever you want it to be based on what platform you put them in, ah. whether the platform is the knee surface, whether the platform is the face, whether the platform is the scalp. What, they're smart enough that once you put them on that platform, they become they know where to go. What they that become that. They adapt to that. To yeah. You know, I heard something about that one time. Somebody gave it to me in real layman terms. Is that, uh, And he was a, uh, the head of oncology at UCSF at, up there at the... At the hospital and the college and he said that the easiest way i could tell you is like stem cells are like firemen mm -hmm. they go out and like little fire they all go out and they put out the there's an issue there's a fire 
and they go put out the fire. Mm -hmm. And then they go back to what they're doing. Exactly. And then so the stem cells kind of react the same way. He told me you put the stem cells where they're needed. Mm -hmm. They go in there, they take care of business, and then they just go back to what they're doing. And, and because of your cells, we don't have to, what we call, grow it out multiple generations. If I took cells from a relative of yours and attempt to give them to you, I then have to grow those cells out multiple generations. I have to grow them out six, seven, eight generations so it to lose its antigenicity, for it to lose its ability to react negatively. And, but the, because but well, because of your cells, I don't have to worry about that process. That, that's an expensive process. It's a process that has to happen in a university setting. It can't happen in a private office. Because of your cells in a private office, I could take them out and put them back in, and we can make make a difference. And what do you, what do you think the um, the medical industry is going to? What do you think is going to be spent mostly in, on uh, in research and in the up and coming medical research? I, it's, it's pretty clear that sixty to seventy percent of all. The dollars spent in healthcare in ten years will be in something involved in stem cells, huh. because we're walking around with the with the answer. We no longer have to use the pharmacognosis who are the, that individual who is the guy or woman who goes to the Brazilian um, Brazilian rainforest to find the plant with the chemicals that has to cure, because we're walking around with the cure right here, real time, on the streets of Vegas, in our bodies. It just has to be extracted. We don't have to fly to Brazil. They get the answer. You don't have to fly to the Amazon to find the answer. You don't have to show up um, somewhere in Australia, um, in the backwoods of, of Australia to find the answer. We have the answer right here inside our bodies, and that's the, the beauty of the human body, um, that, that we do have the answer. So we just have to, medicine just needs to catch up to that um, Put and put, put big pharma in check. <laughs> and, I was going to be nice today, Doc. Yeah, I, I saw it in your eyes. Uh, I you just, know, you know, yeah. I, I read your body language, so let me just say it for you. I was trying to be nice. I know, I know you were. I know you were. Uh, was there another question there, there, Tony? Yeah, actually, um, we had um, we had someone ask, and this is actually kind of a good thing. Uh, the person has a grandfather that is 100 years old, okay. so he's 20 short of. Living to 120. Okay. okay. Um, he's living in a nursing home, uh, but he's in wonderful shape. And they just wanted to know, is there anything in addition to what he's already doing uh, that's going to help? Uh, great question. He made it to 100 without me, and that's great. <laughs> uh, and, and so first of all, I'll say he needs to keep doing what he's doing because obviously he's doing something right. Um but I also understand that if he's 100, that his telomeres, the tail on your cells, and we've talked about this before, um, you're born with tails on your cells, and those, those tails determine your longevity. Um, so if, for example, when he was born, his telomere, the tail on his cell, was two feet long, just hypothetically, um, we know that by the time he got to be 50-ish, they were w one feet long, and now at 90, they may only be one inch long. And then at 100, they may be a quarter of an inch or a fraction of an inch long. So that time is, is drawing near. Time is running out. Um, there are some herbal combinations out there. Um, and we have that new she machine coming. The Zyto Zyto machine. The Zyto machine. Um, that, that actually will help to lengthen the telomere. And by lengthening the telomere, you buy more time. Um, so, so if someone is in a hundred years of age and in great shape, um, I, I would try not to mess with what was not broken. Um, but I still would fix the bathwater, fix the bathwater, fix the bathwater, fix what your mind and your heart and your liver and your kidney is floating in every day. And he's floating in bathwater that has short telomeres and so we need to fix the telomeres so is there something that you should do is work on fixing the telomeres um they can bring it to the office we can do the test and we can put together that combination on how to fix the telomeres um, we still want them on vitamin d3 because often people in nursing homes are not getting a lot of sunlight and we need sun to impact on the skin to convert vitamin d to d3 um, that's the other item we need to have done and there's a couple other minor items but the main thing is um Telomere, telomere length, telomere length, telomere length, fix the bath water, fix the telomeres. You're listening to KLAV, station 1230 AM, KLAV, station 1230 AM. Call us at 731-1230, 731-1230. We'll be right back.
just about four years ago, I was longboarding. Hit the side of a truck. I'm sent home with the Roxy Codone and the Percocet. The dose milligram, it didn't change, but how often I would take them did. I, I wanted to stop. These withdrawal symptoms are something that I wish upon no one. I went to my doctor, Dr. Wilcox. He claimed withdrawal free. It was literally a miracle. I feel, I would say 100% better. I'm Dr. Simon Wilcox. I've been practicing medicine for the last 23 years. My passion has been drug and alcohol dependency, particularly methamphetamine. So what I've done in my practice, is I've, I've re-engineered how we approach the detox rejuvenation process. You go through a process where you don't feel any symptoms. My staff priority is to ensure you're not having that discomfort. Call 702-749-7111. Are you having difficulty detoxing from drugs or medication? Let Dr. Wilcox help you. Call at 702-749-7111. His revolutionary detoxing program is designed to help you detox without the discomfort of other procedures. Call him at 702-749-7111. Visit his office in Summerlin at 8751 Charleston, Suite 210, behind Fleming Steakhouse. Call Dr. Wilcox at 702-749-7111. Do you know that 60% of the healthcare dollars spent over the next 10 years will be spent on stem cells or a stem cell related process? Listen in as we define for you how medicine will change your life and the life of those who you love over the next 10 to 15 years. Covering the issues that matter and adding years to your life. Longevity with Dr. Wilcox. Monday and Thursday morning at 10. Only here on KLAV. Hello, my name is Dr. Simon Wilcox. I'm a board certified physician in family medicine. I have 20 years experience with drug and alcohol abuse and treatment thereof. I bring to you a new service at my facility. We're asking you to examine your household, your family, your community, and decide if there's someone there who needs what we have to offer. Give Dr. Simon Wilcox a call today at 702-749-7111. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. This is Longevity with Dr. Wilcox. We're back at the bottom of the hour. Um, Sherry, if you listen to me, please go to the hospital. <laughs> okay. And, um, and fellas, stop calling me peaches when <laughs> in between the breaks. <laughs> um Tony, you, there, was, there was another question out there. Yes, um, I received a message on Twitter. Uh, by the way, we are on Twitter. If you have any questions and don't feel like calling in at uh, uh, hashtag Dr. Wilcox, that's D-R-S-I-M-M-O-N Wilcox, W-I-L-C-O-X. Um, they wanted to know, um, they, need clear, they need clarity on last show where you were talking about fat cells. Um. It's actually very simple, but it's, it's, it's counterintuitive. As we gain weight, we gain fat cells. The bigger you are, if you were 100 pounds when you left high school and now you're 200 pounds, you've gained 100 pounds worth of fat cells. You've gained additional cells other than the cells you already had. Now, if you lose that weight, if you go back from 200 pounds down to 100 pounds and you lose 100 pounds of weight, you don't lose the cells. The cells you, that, we, that were added to your body remain, which is a difficult concept. But why did I lose the weight if, if, the, if the cells remain? You lost the weight because the cells shrunk. So now the cells will shrink down and you can get, get back to 100 pounds, but now you're a 100 pound person with the potential to get back to 200 pretty fast. And, and that's part of the problem with the yo-yo. People yo-yo, you gain weight, you lose weight, you gain weight, you lose weight. Because every time you gain weight, you gain new cells. And you lose the weight, now you have to really micromanage not just the original weight that you had, the original number of fat cells you had when you was 100 pounds, but every time you gain weight, you gain more fat cells. And so now you're micromanaging those shrunken fat cells. And so the way you micromanage that is a little different, and, and that's what we help people do in the office. And, and we help you understand how do you micromanage that issue because until you learn how to micromanage the shrunken fat cells you will continue to yo-yo 
They will continue to yo-yo. The mm-hmm. yo-yo will not mm-hmm. stop. Um, and that's, that's a new concept in, in healthcare and in medicine, and, and it's, it's difficult for people to absorb that, that you feel the cells do not go away, they just shrink, but they're still there and therefore easy to regain the weight if you start to slide down the slippery side of the mountain, if you start to fall off the wagon. Are, are, they, are, they, are they damaging to your body by being in there, Doc? You know, fat, fat becomes its own organ. Um, fat begets fat. I mean, it, it okay. starts to release certain types of toxins. Um, we, we need the fatty acids initially, and that's what fat cells store fatty acids initially for energy. But once you start to have the fatty acid stores beyond what you need for energy, they become toxic to the body. Mm-hmm. So the more fat cells, the more fatty acids, the more inherent toxicity you're carrying with you. Fat in and of itself is not the problem. The, what, the problem is what fat cells generate, and what fat cells release, and how our bodies handles that release. That's the problem. That's when we start to get into trouble. That's when we start to create all the diseases that we see that, that seem to um, hover around, around one's um, obesity. So if, if I'm hearing you right, if I weighed 200 pounds for simple math and I lost 100 pounds, mm-hmm. okay, and I've got 200 pounds worth of fat cells in me, um, I'm still not 100% healthy. I, I still have an opportunity to... You have the opportunity to, to regain the weight, yes. You are healthier when you lose the weight. The, the problem is that the, if the fat cells have shrunken, they won't do as much damage as they will when they're swollen. Gotcha. But, but if, you, if it's two people, both weighed 100 pounds when they left high school, mm-hmm. 10 years later, one still weighs 100, 10 years later, the other one gained 100 pounds and then lost back to 100 the person who gained and lost is going to have a bigger time trying to micromanage their health than the person who never gained the weight at all so it's a, it's a different science in terms of how you micromanage that and and so they need someone who understands that from a physician standpoint to teach them how to micromanage the new the new you because you have now all these silent soldiers that are shrunken but there and trying to and waiting to create havoc. So how do you keep that havoc in check? You know, how do you fix that particular bathwater? But that's that's a that's a point that's hard for people to absorb. Yeah. Um, it's an important one. And so we spend time in the office, usually for about forty five minutes with the clients. Um, as part of the what we teach when I do my, my weight loss program with those who we have personal trainers too, as I said before, I only take on patients who have to lose at least hundred pounds. Um, and we show them um, how to make the magic work. Awesome. Um, because cause it is a different um, paradigm in terms of how you address uh, one who had the weight and lost the weight. Is there a way to get rid of those fat cells, Doc? Um, liposuction gets rid of the cells. The, the cells act, once they suck them out, they're, they're really gone. Okay. They're, they're really gone. So, yeah, that's one way, but it's usually surgery. It's pretty some invasive. Surgery, yeah, it's pretty invasive. Um, it's an invasive way to get rid of it. There's no natural way that I figured out yet that allows you to um, implode the cells, if you will, um, while they're still in your body. I, I haven't figured that one out yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. That's right. Let's go. You know, let's go. Let's it. go. Absolutely. Um, I think we've had a great show. Yeah. Um, good times. Thank all those who are listening. I really appreciate all of you who, who call in yeah. and even those of you who make it to the office and, and see us face to face. I appreciate all of you. Um, we welcome all of your applause and all your complaints. Um, <laughs> we're okay with both sides of it. This is a, is a learning and growing experience for all of us. You're listening to KLAV 1230 AM, KLAV 1230 AM. Um, please come to our office, give us a call, continue to listen to our show. Our listeners across the United States, particularly those out in Texas who like to call us, and our friends from Armenia have a safe trip back. Um, Sherry, please go to the hospital. Have a great week. Take care. God bless.